almost immediately after Teddy Pendergrass left Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes because he felt like they were cheating him out of his money, he got a new manager and went solo. People should have been able to see that he was going to break out. After all, the group went from being called Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes to being renamed Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes featuring Theodore Pendergrass right at the time of the Wake Up Everybody album. But back to this new manager of his, she also became his girlfriend. Did she really love him? Did he really love her? Was she just a great businesswoman? Or did she trap him into a shady management contract? Would Teddy have killed her just to get out of this contract? Let's talk about it. If you like these videos about your favorite and most scandalous celebrities that make the Ty Said What Ty Said channel a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream. And comment, I subscribed, in the comment section so that I can say hello to you. Now, on to why you are here. Did Teddy Pendergrass put a hit out on his girlfriend and manager to get out of a bad contract? You be the judge. When Teddy Pendergrass left Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes in 1975, the separation had to do with creative differences. The group was looking like it was on the verge of having two lead singers, and Teddy Pendergrass was determined to be one of them. But it was also about his money. Teddy felt like he was being underpaid for what he was bringing to the table. That was something that he was just not going to tolerate, so he left. Then, Tasmaya Melanie Lang walked into Teddy's life. Side note, to me, Holly Robinson Pete bears a striking resemblance to this woman. Is it just me? Let me know if you agree or not in the comments. Anyway, back to Tasmaya. She was beautiful, smart, well-connected, and because she was rich, she was also everything that Teddy needed right at that time. She was very well known in the black elite circles of Philadelphia, a bit of a socialite, and those who knew her well called her Tads. She was a mother, a daughter, a friend to many. She was voted most popular at her Germantown High School. She was a businesswoman, a model, and an ex-wife. Her ex-husband is Israel Alvin Izzy Lane. He was a running back for the Philadelphia Eagles for the majority of his NFL career. And it is likely because of her relation to him that she was able to hobnob with the celebrities of Philadelphia. She was friends with a number of people whose names you would know, like Dionne Warwick and Nancy Wilson. But let's back up to the part about Taz being rich that worked out well for Teddy Pendergrass when he met her because he was broke. He saw that she was booking celebrity clients at her mother's hair salon. Nancy Wilson, Dionne Warwick, Lola Falana, and more. He knew that he needed her and he tried his best to get her attention and then win her affections and he eventually did. He became her boyfriend and he ended up moving into her home. Teddy saw her connections and figured that she would be the perfect person who could get him on his feet and jumpstart his solo career. So he begged Taz to be his manager, and he asked her to give him some money to get everything going. Taz agreed to manage him, and she agreed to front him $15,000 to start Teddy Bear Productions Incorporated. Just for the sake of perspective, that $15,000 in 1975 is equivalent to $73,000 in purchasing power today in 2021. She also drafted a management contract for him to sign. According to the terms of this contract, all proceeds generated from Teddy's debut solo album, tour, and merchandising would be managed by Taz under the production company, Teddy Bear Productions. As Teddy's manager, she would receive 10% of the proceeds from his debut album and one share in the company, of which she became vice president. And that was it. At least, that's what Teddy Pendergrass thought was it. Well, Teddy was a singer, not a contract attorney. Taz would receive everything mentioned, 
but the contract that Teddy Pendergrass signed entitled Taz to much more than that. Yes, she would get 10% of the royalties from his debut album, and he knew that. But she would also get 10% of the royalties of all of his future albums. This contract also gave her 10% on any of Teddy's future business endeavors. Teddy Pendergrass was said to have been furious about this contract. Too bad he didn't learn the details before he signed it because he wanted out of this contract with his lover. Taz refused to terminate the contract. Taz refused to even renegotiate the contract. Could it be that her unwillingness to soften this deal for Teddy led to him putting an end to her life? Now, on to the night that would be the end of her life. As most of the records recount that night, after a lot of complaining about this one-sided management contract that heavily favored his girlfriend, Teddy Pendergrass was conveniently out of town on the night of April 14, 1977. After a long day of work, Taz was being driven home by Jojo Tynes. He was the stage manager for Teddy Pendergrass. He pulled up into Taz's driveway and let her out of the car. As she was stepping out of the Mercedes and getting ready to enter her home, Jojo claimed to be getting something out of the trunk of the car. While the trunk was open, a gunman jumped out of Taz's bushes and shot her in her chest, only once, but killing her instantly. She was 31 years old. May she rest in peace. She was said to have put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into launching Teddy's solo career. She never got to see it come to fruition because she was killed two months before his debut album was even released. When the Philadelphia Police Department and all of Philadelphia was trying to solve her murder, five days after Taz was killed, on April 19, 1977, her family held her funeral. Jesse Jackson performed the eulogy. Teddy Pendergrass sang for her funeral, and it is reported that he was getting dirty stares from many people attending, and even Jesse Jackson himself, who had heard some rumors about Teddy's possible involvement in the murder of Miss Lang. This dispute that Teddy Pendergrass had with her about his management contract was well known, and for that reason, made him a suspect in her killing in the minds of many people who knew the pair. Adding to the suspicion that Teddy Pendergrass was involved in her murder was his reaction to hearing that she was killed. His road manager, Henry Evans, said that Teddy's reaction just wasn't right and he seemed to be relieved at hearing the news rather than sad or grieving. Add to that, that Teddy said that Taz was the love of his life but very shortly after her death, he was entertaining females. Many females. And I don't mean by singing on a stage. Many who didn't suspect that Teddy himself pulled the trigger thought that he paid the Philadelphia Black Mafia to get rid of her. It is alleged that the Black Mafia were big fans of their hometown hero, and they felt bitter about the control that Taz Lang had over Teddy's career. It is even said that some of the gang members were personal friends of Teddy, and they didn't like the fact that Taz was ruining their fun. No alcohol, no weed, no cocaine, no prostitutes, just work for Teddy. But very shortly after she was killed, Teddy started using the money that he was making through his production company, the production company that Taz set up and financed. He was using that money to bring back the fun for himself and his street hustler friends. Liquor, weed, coke, hookers, they could have it all now. Teddy was free from the handcuffs of this contract and the world was his oyster. If he saw it and he wanted it, he got it. A 34-room mansion, a Mercedes-Benz, a Corvette, a Maserati, a Rolls-Royce, motorcycles, jewelry, you name it. It was all big fun and a pretty good run until March 18th, 1982. That was the date of the car crash that left him paralyzed. 
I uploaded a video about that incident from the point of view of the trans woman who was in the car with him during that wreck. You can see it here. Was that car accident only an accident? Or was it some type of payback from one of Taz Lang's associates or loved ones? Or was it Teddy's karma from the universe for using the woman who helped him to get on his feet? You judge for yourself. Most of us know about the wreck that left him paralyzed when he wrecked his Rolls Royce, crashing it into a tree. But did you know that he had a wreck just one week before that one? A week before Teddy Pendergrass wrecked his Rolls Royce, he wrecked his Maserati. There have been many conspiracy theories about why those two wrecks happened back to back, with many people assuming, and some people even claiming to know, that his brakes were tampered with, or his vehicles were in some other manner tampered with, so that he would lose control and wreck. Did you know that after that wreck that paralyzed him, in 1986, he was in yet another vehicle accident? This time, it was a van that was specially equipped for his paraplegic body. And once again, there were no other cars involved, but this time, instead of like his Rolls Royce running into a tree, his van ran into a utility pole. Was someone still out to get him? Or, or all, or one, or two of these wrecks merely coincidental? I'd like to know what you think about it. I'll be looking forward to reading your comments. Hi everyone. Okay, I'm coming back. So I've already recorded and edited the audio for this video at the time that I'm recording this piece now. Um, I was sourcing the photos for this video and I came across a 1978, July 20th, 1978 issue of Jet Magazine while I was looking for the photos and it has Teddy Pendergrass on the cover. And the title story reads, Teddy Pendergrass won't let tragedy change his lifestyle. I'm going to read a little bit of the article and you decide what you want to believe. Now, as I'm reading this, keep in mind that Teddy Pendergrass told the police that he and Miss Lang were still an item and that she was the love of his life at the time of her death. But this is what happened in Jet Magazine. I'm just going to read these couple of paragraphs. Jet reads, although on the music scene a short time, Teddy has encountered hurdles that would have slowed lesser men. At the height of his popularity, Teddy said adios to Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes to forge a solo singing career. His critics cried, he'll never make it. And then suddenly, late last year, tragedy struck when his attractive manager, Taz Lang, was gunned down in front of her fashionable Philadelphia home. A murder that police still have not solved. Through it all, Pendergrass has moved straight ahead. Pendergrass noted quite candidly that the murder of Miss Lang, his manager and former lover, had not adversely affected his career. Relaxing at his chic Ridden House Square apartment, he revealed to Jet, quote, I don't question God or the reasons things happen. We were very close. In fact, she used to be my girl, Pendergrass said. We had dispensed our relationship and went to a business relationship. It didn't affect me, Pendergrass said, but I am very sorry to see her go because she was a beautiful person. It wouldn't slow me down. If anything, it spurred me on that much more. Pendergrass revealed that several months following Miss Lang's murder, he received threats that the same thing would happen to him, but he continued, I don't mean that I've forgotten her because she's not the forgettable type of person. So that's all that I want to read. There is more to that article, as you can see at the beginning, and there's more even um, after this. I wanted to point out that he told the police that he and Miss Lang were an item at the time of her death. But here in Jet Magazine, he's saying that they only went to a business relationship so that her death didn't affect him. So it does kind of go in line with what his road manager was saying that he seemed kind of cold about hearing about her death, in my opinion. Maybe you see it differently, but I did want to add that to the story so that you could hear some things uh, that were, you know, direct quotes from him, as well as a piece about his receiving threats 
that the same thing would happen to him. Obviously, he wasn't shot to death, but maybe that just means that death would happen because we know all the things with the cars that would happen after 1978. So I just wanted to put that little piece uh, in there and you can put it together however makes sense in your mind. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ty Said What Ty Said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and comment so that we can get a discussion going. And share this video on all of your social media, especially your Facebook. That really helps me out a lot. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when my next video is ready for you. And if you don't like what I'm saying, but you love it, feel free to hit that applaud button just below your video screen there and send me some donations, donations, donations. Yeah, baby. See you on the next video.